In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. We come together this morning to remember and pray for one of the longest serving priests of our Shrewsbury Diocese, Canon John Marmion, and to extend to his family our sympathy in your loss, a sense of loss which is shared by the whole of this diocese this morning. For few indeed can remember the Shrewsbury Diocese without Canon Marmion. Let us now not forget him at the altar 
and in our prayer. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Hear with favour our prayers, which we humbly offer, O Lord, for the salvation of the soul of John, your servant and priest, that he who devoted a faithful ministry to your name may rejoice in the perpetual company of your saints. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. With God on our side, who can be against us? Since God did not spare his own son, but gave him up to benefit us all, we may be certain, after such a gift, that he will not refuse anything he can give. <clears throat> Could anyone accuse those that God has chosen? When God acquits, could anyone condemn? Could Christ Jesus? No. He not only died for us, he rose from the dead. And there at God's right hand, he stands and pleads for us. Nothing, therefore, can come between us and the love of Christ. Even if we are troubled or worried or being persecuted, or lacking food or clothes, or being threatened, or even attacked. These are the trials through which we triumph by the power of him who loved us. For I am certain of this, neither death nor life, no angel, no prince, Nothing that exists, nothing still to come. Not any power or height or depth, nor any created thing can ever come between us and the love of God made visible in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
words of your song. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, two of the disciples were on their way to a village called Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking together about all that had happened. Now as they talked this over, Jesus himself came up and walked by their side, but something prevented them from recognizing him. He said to them, What matters are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped short, their faces downcast. Then one of them, called Cleopas, answered him, You must be the only person staying in Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that have been happening there these last few days. What things, he asked, all about Jesus of Nazareth, they answered, who proved he was a great prophet by the things he said and did in the sight of God and of the whole people, and how our chief priests and our leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death and had him crucified. Our own hope, had been that he would be the one to set Israel free. And this is not all. Two whole days have gone by since it all happened, and some women from our group have astounded us. They went to the tomb in the early morning, and when they did not find the body, they came back to tell us that they'd seen a vision of angels who declared he was alive. Some of our friends went to the tomb and found everything exactly as the women had reported, but of him they saw nothing. Then he said to them, You foolish men, so slow to believe the full message of the prophets. Was it not ordained that the Christ should suffer and so enter into his glory? Then starting with Moses and going through all the prophets, He explained to them the passages throughout scriptures that were about himself. When they drew near to the village to which they were going, he made as if to go on, but they pressed him to stay with them. It's early evening, they said, and the day is almost over. So he went to stay with them. Now while he was with them at table, he took the bread and said the blessing, Then he broke it and handed it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he had vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? They set out that instant and returned to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven assembled together with their companions, who said to them, Yes, it is true. The Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then they told their story of what had happened on the road and how they'd recognized him at the breaking of bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
On my arrival in the diocese, I was invited by the then octogenarian Canon John Marmion to join him on a walk. Now, I had imagined that this would be a relatively gentle stroll with such a venerable member of the clergy. However, my altogether false impression was quickly corrected because for Canon Marmion, every walk would become something of an adventure. And I was reminded of this when I recently heard some words of St. Gregory of Nyssa, the 4th century bishop and father of the church, commenting on the journey of faith made by the then elderly Abraham. He reflects on the paradox that Abraham didn't know where he was going, and so he was sure he was on the right path. Something similar might be said of every priestly life, for it is not given to a priest to see where he is going from one chapter of his mission to the next, the places, the people, the challenges before him. Yet insofar as we hand over the direction to the Lord, we can also be sure of being on the right path. And we carry the same assurance the Apostle Paul shared with the Romans, which remains the source of our courage. Nothing can come between us and the love of Christ. This is the conviction of one who knows the risen Christ, present with us now, supremely in the Eucharist. And this was surely true of the young Father Marmion, setting out on the adventure of the priesthood on a now distant day in 1951. It would be difficult for him to have imagined what the next 72 years of priestly life and ministry would bring from those immediate years after the Second World War to the second decade of the 21st century. Yet we cannot doubt this priest was not merely ready for the challenge ahead, but relished the whole adventure in the service of countless souls, in the service of vocations, of youth, of Christian marriage, of Catholic education, as archivist for the diocese in pursuing higher academic studies in the learning he greatly valued. Retirement was probably the one challenge Father John did not relish. Yet he made this too an adventure in reaching out across continents in work which took him to Burundi and Ethiopia and in his care of the contemplative community of the Carmelites here in Birkenhead. Canon Marmion was a regular correspondent during my years as bishop, sometimes offering advice, often encouragement, but most notably and impressively showing sincere and heartfelt interest in everything that was happening and always assuring me of a place in his prayer. I'm sure this was the experience of many, manifesting a love for the church, a love for souls, a love for this Shrewsbury Diocese, which neither faltered nor faded. Father John might have stood out as a priest to climb the heights of K2 in the Himalayas or more prosaically, went on fundraising walks amounting, he once told me, to more than two and a half thousand miles. Indeed, he didn't seem to consider a sponsored walk worthwhile if it was shorter than 300 miles. Yet underlying the whole breathtaking adventure of his life, there was a profounder journey. 
shared with every priest and expressed by the psalmist in the prayer with which he approached the altar as a young priest, asking that he might climb the mountain of the Lord and that the joy of his youth might always be renewed. This is the ascent known by all of us along the gentler path to Emmaus. Only a Sabbath's walk, St. Luke tells us, where our eyes in faith are opened and we recognize Jesus Christ as the constant companion on our way. Each day we can say, Father John's heart continue to burn in daily renewed recognition of the same Lord Jesus who reveals himself in the scriptures and in the mystery of the Eucharist. The Mass was the heart of his priestly life. Whether the Eucharistic sacrifice was celebrated on some of the highest peaks on earth, or when he received Holy Communion amid the frailty and restrictions of his last days. As a man and as a priest who walked so long a journey, who glimpsed such beauty along the way, we pray as his family, his friends and his diocese that he may reach the destination of all his journey and his eyes may finally see the face of the Lord in glory. Pope Benedict, who died shortly before Canon Marmion and was a year younger, reminded us in a last letter that those who live long lives and are entrusted with responsibility for souls have an exacting account to give to the Lord. May we not neglect our last duty of love to pray for his eternal repose. And so may our own Canon John Marmion go on his final journey, accompanied by our prayers that he may rest in peace. Eternal rest Grant to him, O Lord, let perpetual light shine upon him. Amen. And now let us stand to make that prayer on Canon Marmion's behalf. God, the Almighty Father, raise Christ, his Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. For John, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, <coughs> that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our brother, who at the body of Christ the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our brother John, who served the church as a priest, that he may be given a place in the liturgy of heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And for all our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who've helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those who've fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of our brother John, 
that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brother, your servant and priest. Cleanse him of all and all the faithful departed of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We ask your mercy, Lord, that this sacrifice of our service offered for the soul of John, your servant and priest, may now bring pardon to him who devoutly offered sacrifice to you in the church through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And now let's offer each other a sign of that peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 
the body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Renewed by food from your heavenly table, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that by the power of this sacrifice, the soul of John, your servant and priest, who faithfully ministered in your church, may exult forever in your sight, through Christ our Lord. With faith in Jesus Christ, we must reverently bury the body of our brother. Let us pray with confidence to God, in whose sight all creation lives, that he will raise up in holiness and power the mortal body of our brother, and command his soul be numbered among the blessed. May God grant him a merciful judgment deliverance from death, and pardon of sin. May Christ the Good Shepherd carry him home to be at peace with the Father. May he rejoice forever in the presence of the Eternal King and in the company of all the saints. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother John, in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon John, your servant and your priest, in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness 
and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our brother forever, through Christ our Lord.